G'day guys, how you going? Hope you're all having a fantastic evening. Tonight I'm going to be doing a review of a found footage horror film from Ireland, English language, released in the year 2010, directed by Ewan Macken, and this film is called The Inside. And the story to The Inside is as follows. The Inside is a terrifying journey into Dublin's disturbing underbelly. A man enters a pawn shop and discovers a video camera with a tape still inside. As he watches the footage, he sees a series of horrific events for a group of friends who have broken into a derelict warehouse to have a party. Their fun is interrupted by a group of deranged vagrants, intent on terrorising and torturing the group. Their night of horror is only just beginning, as the violence awakens an even more sinister force from the depths of the site. Victim or violator, it makes no difference, as the fear and claustrophobia escalate and all are prey to this terrifying new evil. There is no escape from the horror that's waiting in the inside. So the movie starts off with this guy who goes into a pawn shop, he buys this video camera, and he sees that there is a tape still inside the video camera. So he watches it, and this is, a, the, the video camera used to be owned by a woman who is going out with a group of friends. Now there is um, other females and there's one male. And they're going to have a party at this derelict warehouse. So they get into the warehouse and they think it's empty, but it's not. It's actually home to three homeless men who are complete psychopaths. So these homeless men take the, this group captive and they torture and they rape them. So very, very bad things are happening. But to the girl's horror, that is not the worst that's going to happen because an evil has awakened as a result of all of these evil doings. And this... Um, presence inside the warehouse is far greater than you know is, is a far greater evil than that of the three homeless men so a supernatural force is stalking them down and whether or not they make it out of this ordeal alive that's something you're going to have to find out for yourself because that's as far as I'm going with my synopsis now my thoughts on the film, I really wanted to love this movie. This movie is a found footage film and you could say to yourself that yeah I don't want to watch it, I'm sick of found footage films and they don't try and do anything different. But this film does try to do something different. It's not a movie that's pretending to be a, a real film like uh, like Blair Witch Project where they, the gimmick was you've just found it, it's a real film, these are real people. This film makes no attempt at doing that. And at the start of the movie it's not found footage so it kind of feels like the, the footage that this guy is watching is reality within another dimension. So it's kind of the movie world, but the when he starts looking at the video camera, it starts to go into uh, found footage. So it kind of feels like the movie is not pretending to be real. It's just a movie, but it's reality within the dimension, if you know what I mean. And I think that, yeah, it has been done before, but I feel that this movie, it's a welcome breath of fresh air because it's nothing like trying to sell you over with saying that this is real. And obviously you know it's not real, but I just get sick of that sort of gimmick where you're watching a film where it's supposed to be real people, whereas in this one it's supposed to be a movie and the director doesn't try and hide that. So I really liked that aspect to it and I thought that was a very good way to start the film. It's very well made. I thought the money put into it had, was well spent. I don't know how big the budget was. It's not a massive budget, but I thought it was very well spent and it shows that Ewan Macken has a lot of talent behind the camera. I thought the acting was very decent. The characters were well drawn out, although they weren't overly likable. They were young, these females and this male. They were young, they were having fun, they were ignorant, uh, they were irresponsible, but they were not exaggerated to the point where you wanted to see them die. And when these horrific things happen, you really sympathise for them because these three homeless men are completely nuts. And that is actually the best thing about the film and is also the worst thing about the film so they go into the warehouse and you know something really bad is going to happen and that bad sort of feeling is um, basically realized when these three homeless men come out and they start doing awful things now the three homeless men were absolutely terrifying and I thought that the film was on the grounds for being a gem I thought the platform was well and all you and Macken had to do was play off the three homeless men so they do horrible things you know it is an extreme film as far as what these three homeless men do to these um, to these uh, people, I thought there's some rape in it. So some very disturbing rape. It's not graphic, but the way it's shot really is very hard hitting and authentic. I felt great um, sympathy for this girl. I wanted to help the girl, and for that response, you need good acting and very you know an authentic feeling. And that's exactly what you get. And that's why I feel that this movie had the grounds to be great because it wasn't a ghost film and it was a film about human beings doing awful things to other human beings. So I thought if you and Macken could have played off this sort of story with these three guys in it throughout the entire length, it would have been a gem. But unfortunately, uh, I wanted to love it. I was loving it up until that point until the movie goes from the three um, homeless men to basically supernatural elements. 
And that's where the movie falls into the generic sort of fashion. You know how it's going to end. You know what's happening. It's a movie that you've basically seen before. Now, if you've seen another film called The Tunnel, which is an Australian film that takes place in storm water drains, it really felt like The Tunnel. And it felt like, you know, in The Tunnel, there was a, a demonic sort of supernatural force that was hunting them down. And all the scares in the second half of this film have been done before. So it really is a very familiar formula. And so he's gone from creating something that was very, very hard-hitting and extreme to something that was very tame and predictable, which is something that really disappointed me. I thought, you know, this was definitely a missed opportunity. I didn't know what Ewan Macken was thinking. Maybe he was thinking, you know, instead of trying to put the, the audience through hell throughout the entire length, I will go down a familiar path to give them comfort or something. Now, it is scary in the second half, I thought when you actually see what's hunting them down, I thought it was pretty freaky. But ultimately, it's just not as freaky as it was in the first half, which is the, the biggest, biggest disappointment. You know, in films, they struggle finishing a movie, but this one felt like a movie of two halves. Now, the first half was just a realistic, gritty betrayal of, as I said, human beings doing something awful to other human beings. And then the second part just took a different turn, and it just goes rapidly downhill from that point on. I thought the ending was very, very rushed, and it just, as I said, it's very generic, um, follows a very, very predictable formula, and it just meanders along, and it just patters out to uh, a whimper when it really should have been a, a sledgehammer to the guts. So, yeah, I mean, uh, I also didn't like the fact that in the second half they were using music to dictate when you should feel scared. I think that takes a lot of realism out of it. Um, you know, when, you've, when you're looking through a video camera, there isn't going to be any soundtrack. There's not going to be any score. So to have a score while you're watching a video camera, it's just, it, it reeks of desperation. It reeks of, um, you know, no confidence in your storytelling, being able to let the audience feel fear by what they see, not what they hear all the time with the score. So I just think that's dictating. I think it's lazy, and I think Ewan Macken has missed a, um, a great chance at creating something truly memorable. This one was bitterly disappointing by the way it finished. As I said, the first half of the film, up until, you know, when the, um, the, the three homeless guys come into it, when they're doing their business, I think, you know, the rape is pretty hard-hitting. Uh, there is some pretty hard-hitting violence, but then it goes very, very tame. So really, really disappointed. I wanted to love the film. I thought I was going to love it, but then I was shocked to see that the movie decided to go down a path that was very, very, very familiar. So, um, yeah, very disappointing. I'm not going to recommend this one. I'm going to give it two stars. Uh, it does have its positives, so hopefully you and Macken can create something bigger and better on a more consistent basis the next time around. So, unfortunate, uh, disappointing effort from Ireland. So that's my review of The Inside. I hope you enjoyed it. Till next time, keep watching movies, and I'll see you later. Bye.